Hey guys, I'm Shantanu Udasi back again with another video for Analytics India magazine capturing everything that has been happening in the world of artificial intelligence. Let's just not waste any more time and jump right into our stories. Our first story is how artificial intelligence can make weather forecasting less cloudy. It won't replace the traditional techniques but it's already increasing the speed and accuracy of the predictions. So this article delves deep into how artificial intelligence will not change the traditional techniques because they are fairly accurate but will help in increasing the accuracy and the speed of the current method. So one major takeaway from this article is that researchers are seeing promise in artificial intelligence to create and narrow down weather forecast which are helpful for local people who are receiving the forecast. So even the best of traditional techniques are accurately predicting rainfall in your city but they they are not accurate in predicting rainfall in your particular area. So researchers are predicting that machine learning will help it to narrow it down geographically and help people much better. The second improvement stated here that machine learning will give over the traditional method is being termed as now casting. It is the short term forecast that can be done in the matter of minutes to predict a sudden calamity. If you can predict a heavy rainfall like matter of hours before it happens, it can immensely helpful a business or a production facility. So the government and tech giants have recognized the potential of artificial intelligence in weather forecasting. That's why Google has partnered with the government to use satellite data for more efficiently predicting the weather using artificial intelligence. This January, the Federal National Center for Atmospheric Research invested 35 million in a new supercomputer with architecture more suitable for the latest AI techniques. So some of the experts in this domain are still skeptical about AI's role in weather predictions and they are saying that it will be at least one decade before we accurately figure out how to use artificial intelligence in weather forecasting and how it will help humanity for the greater good. Moving on to our next story, our next story is that Apple is moving towards renewable energy by using Tesla's mega pack batteries for its solar farm facility. Apple has announced that it is going to create a solar energy storage facility in California and they are going to use Tesla's mega pack battery as their energy storage systems. This is a setup of 85 Tesla's mega pack battery which were first announced in 2019. This energy will used to help and power Apple's headquarters. So it is a huge boost for Tesla, the company that entered solar business in 2016 when it acquired Solar City for 2.6 billion. However, this segment is still to break even and has still to generate revenue because energy generation and storage made up of 6% of the company's total revenue in 2020. But it is rapidly growing and it has shown a growth of 30% from 2019 to 2020. Moving on to our next story. Our next story is that online education provider Coursera is worth 7 billion after going public. So Coursera after 9 years finally decided to go public and what a strong showing they had on their first day after going public. So they debuted with a share price of $33. By the end of the day the shares were trading at 45 and they continue to rise even today. At its last fundraising in July 2020, the company was valued at 2.6 billion. It's now worth 7 billion. So Coursera basically started by providing free courses, but then later on integrating more prestigious universities in their catalog and asking students who can afford it to pay for them and giving scholarships to other students who can't. Coursera, which turned its focus on paid courses and since 2017 it has been operating as a consumer business which is selling courses of 150 institutions to any student that is willing to pay and it is generating the largest share of its revenue. According to the SEC filings the segment generated 193 million of its 249 million in 2020 revenue. So the most popular course available at Coursera is Python for Everyday Specialization taught by University of Michigan professors Charles Russell Severance. And not to mention that the pandemic gave a huge boost to online courses and gave a sort of validity that it was lacking beforehand and before the pandemic. After the pandemic, everybody realized that you can acquire skills and get knowledge right from your home and from remote locations. Moving on to our next story, 
Our next story is that scientists are creating online games to show the risk of AI emotion recognition. So facial recognition and emotional recognition using artificial intelligence is a much debated topic in today's world and the ethics involving it and how it should be used. So by doing this experiment, the researchers are aiming to generate some conversations around emotional recognition by artificial intelligence and how easily can it be fooled and how it can be used adversely. So talking about the scrutiny on facial recognition through AI, last year the Equity and Human Rights Commission said its use for mass screening should be halted, saying it would increase police discrimination and harm freedom of expression. Some people might not be aware that how common emotional recognition is in today's world. Emotional recognition is used from job hiring to consumer insight work to airport security and even in education to see if students are engaged in doing their homework or writing their exam. This technology is being used all over the world from China to US and the entire Europe. So if you want to try it out for yourself, emoji5.info does not capture any of your pictures into its database. It is purely on your mobile phone and go there, try it for yourself and engage in this conversation which is taking over the world. Moving on to our last story for the day, Wipro to acquire Australian technology service provider Ampion to boost its business in Australia and New Zealand. So the deal has been finalized at $117 million and it will help Wipro's larger efforts of consolidating their positions in focused geographies, customer outreach, building agility, scaling and localization. So Wipro already had a presence in Australia and New Zealand market for over two decades with good client relations across sectors and localized domain and delivery capabilities. It was also recognized as the top employer in Australia for two consecutive years. So that's about it. Those were all the stories that I have for you today. I am Shantanu Udasi signing off and I highly encourage you read these stories in their entirety. Links will be in the description down below. And while you are at it, ring that notification bell and click on that subscribe button so that you never miss any other updates from Analytics India magazine.